Hi guys, continuing on with our tutorial number two. Um, this, as you can see, is a much smaller canvas because I had the big one. I shot me doing this particular step and the file got corrupted, so I remade another one. Same process, blackjack gray gesso over a pure white canvas. Spray some water, let it drip, and let it set. So now we're going to do the same thing we did. Um, in previous drip videos, we're going to start with some the oxaline purple in the corners, phalo green, and you get some of these colors rolling. Uh, forest scene, so we're going to have a bit of a brown. I might need a bigger brush here in a second. And we're going to get these corners good and dark because that's where we want our eyes to kind of keep everything in the center. And I'm going to grab a bit bigger brush so you can see what we're doing. Grab one of these nice black diamonds I love so much. Get some blues. Phalo blue. And ultramarine. Get our sides. These are all transparent colors, but these are heavy bodied acrylics. So just kind of get the stuff in place. I have a paper towel on the very bottom of this. As you know, if you've watched my drip paintings before, that's what they do. A, little, a lot of purple on there. Let's kind of offshoot that a little bit with some greens. So as you can see, I put stuff along the tops and along the bottom. Grabbing some more browns in the lower here. This is a Van Dyke brown. I won't mention my brands, but if you look up heavy body acrylics, you'll see. I'm not sponsored by anybody right now, so don't want to put out stuff there that doesn't need to be there. So our middle section is kept open, and you'll see why, because this is in the future, this is where our painting is going to be. So, mist on very fine, because it's a small canvas. Start at the top. The paint will start to, to roll. It's about a I don't know, 40 to 50 degree angle on my, uh, one of those, you know, um, engineering tables. It kind of sits at an angle. So we'll let some drips start to happen. And at the end of this, I'll show you our big canvas that I've already done this on. A little bit thicker up there. And just let the, uh, the transparent run down into the gesso that's already there and we're starting to get some cool stuff. Any place that gets a little too thick for you, just hit it with some water and just let gravity take its take its toll. I'm liking that. I'm gonna open this up a bit. Just a bit. You don't want to get it too even. Nature really isn't even. Trees and all the things like that tend to have lots of uh, thick and thin areas, and that's what we want. There we go. And you can still see our previous gesso painting behind the transparent paint, which is what you want. And what I did with the last painting is that when I get it the way I like it, I set it upright like that, flat and horizontal, so that it stays and let it dry for overnight or whatever you need. We're about there. I'm just going to leave this a tiny bit more in the center area so that we have some flow and I think we're gonna leave that right there you can see how this gives us lots of opportunities over here for our nice forest in the future and I'm liking that a lot all right I'm gonna let this dry and we'll see what it looks like okay guys I've replaced the previous camps with the one that I finished and it's dried I haven't got my total painting in the, in the frame here because I'm still working on my camera settings, but you get the idea. This one is um, dried and it has the basic ideas that I wanted. You have your layers behind where the gesso and the gray gesso gave us our background images and then we hit it with a drip, acrylic drip, dioxamine purple, phalo green, phalo blue, ultramarine blue, Van Dyke brown. Um, these are all heavy bodied acrylics and 
you can see what we're left with here. This gives us a lot of opportunities to take a good look at our painting and sometimes even to do this or to turn them around and go, hmm, what are we seeing here? Again, I use this process for building backgrounds and what I'm seeing is kind of a fallen log right here with a big branch of a tree up here that is going to come and probably I don't know. I'm not going to let you know what I'm, what I'm doing just yet, but I, this is what I see. And I see a water element down here. I already see a tree right here, a nice tree trunk. Um, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we'll see where this painting takes us. Um, because on my big painting that I got like half a million views on, I really didn't spend a lot of time showing you what I did after this, pro uh, this process. So that's why I'm taking my time now to show you what I'm going to do. All right. Hold on. It's going to be fun. Okay, back to the canvas. I've got some nice white chalk. I mean, it's literally just the dollar store stuff. The reason I like chalk is because if you don't like something, you can just, a little bit of moisture, wipe it right off. And then start drawing out a basic, this is going to be a, tr a fallen tree. So it'll have like a little limb broke off there. And then it will have a longer branch here, you know, kind of going off like that or whatever. And then there'll be like a path in the woods. So this will all be land over here. And then the sides of the cliff that it's covering will come down here. There'll be a water element down here from sort of a stream probably. And then up here, can't be in the direct middle, but somewhere there's going to be a branch, an evil branch, if you will, that's come down part of a bigger tree that will be back there. And it's going to be, It'll be, uh, it'll be capturing a balloon. That's what I have right now. It'll be a little balloon that's, that the tree has captured. And there are going to be some figures here that are little, like little people that are walking across here in the middle of the woods. That's the first vision I have for this painting. You may have others. If you do, leave them in the uh, comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, but use some chalk. That way, if you don't like something, let's say if I don't like the balloon, I'll just wipe, wipe it out. Then I'll often come back with just pure white paint on a liner brush and start lining in the, the permanent stuff that I want to keep. Um, it gives me a great base to start painting on. The other way I do this sometimes is that I'll put this canvas up vertical and I have a projector, a small projector that runs off your camera or off a PC. And I'll shut all the lights off and I'll actually shoot images onto the background that I've done, the drip background. And I can, with the, with the, the projector I can project these images in any size that I want let's say I'm working on a portrait and I can place them like eyes or whatever I've done my Maryland paintings and a lot of my other paintings that way and it gets the right placement for those elements in my painting and then I'll go and take the chalk and just trace it out real quick so I'll show that on an upcoming video it's a pretty neat process I, I say do anything that will get the job done whatever helps you get the best vision for your painting all right We'll uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so we've got just white gesso again. It's uh, I thin mine down a little bit for processes like this. Shake it up, little small liner brush, and I'm going to start with the things I want to keep. All I'm doing now is just reinforcing my lines. If I know I want a branch or something, a broken off branch right here. This works really well, especially on black paintings or dark paintings. Just kind of line out what you want to do. I think I have another branch right here. The bottom is really important on this tree. It needs to be correct. So I'm just going to put in a quick line right here. So the angle is right. Remember, trees are bigger at the bottom. So get the basics going. I know I want the tree to be into the, the hill, if you will. So my basic branch is going to come up like that, something like that. Finish off here, probably a jagged edge, something like that. Or you'd leap off it if you were in the, in the forest. That's the basics. There's going to be probably some stones over here, various things like that. The tree is probably going to come up. The base of the tree will be a tree stump over here. I haven't fully worked that out yet, but... Uh, that's going to be the basic idea. It's going to be divided right there. Our uh, embankment will come down like that. Again, I have to work on perspective. 
So this is the basic stuff that we're doing here. The limb up here isn't so important right now, but just so I can reinforce kind of where the general area where I want it. A liner brush will be doing all the fine twig work in the future, but you get the idea. I'm going to do something like that. And by outlining in white, now you have a, a basic idea of what you want, and it won't, won't rub off. I'm going to leave our, uh, our bottom down here because I'm not sure exactly how I want my cliffs to be. I know my water element will be here. It'll be a reflection of the elements up here that will be down in the water. Um, that's where you can have fun with this. All right, so I'm going to leave there and we'll start painting. I normally don't mention brand names, but these um, black, black diamond uh, dynasty brushes, black silvers, are great. I get my stuff through the brush guys. No, I'm not affiliated with them. I'll get, get some links in there for you. But look up brushguys.com. They have the best deals on brushes I've ever seen, and I use them all the time. Um, they're, they're just great. I mean, they have such a great selection. Get on their email list. They'll send you all kinds of neat stuff. All right, so I'm going to go back. Start blocking in some stuff. This again, I moved to black gesso um, just because I got it. And it's easy to use. You know, the bottom of our tree is going to be dark. You can also hit that with some uh, burnt sienna. And this is more transparent, of course. This is our tree colors. I'm going to throw some greens in there right now just to start blocking out some basic shapes and colors. We're not worried about highlights right now. We're just worried about getting something on the canvas. Something tree-ish. I like leaving the white there on the top. This gives me something to work with. Van Dyke Brown. Put a little purple in there. That's kind of cool. But I'm not using any water yet. I uh, don't really see a reason to. So our tree's going to come over there. A little blue at the bottom, give us some shadows. And to make things round, you know how to do that. You're darker on the edges and lighter in the middle. Gesso has a nice opaque effect, so it works well. A lot of these things will be in shadow in the future. But we're just getting some basic stuff shaped out here. Okay, lighter on the top. And go right to that white line and just pull it into your painting. Yeah, won't even matter. So you start seeing that, hey, there's a tree in the woods, yay. You can let that dry a little bit. We'll do a brown wash over it. Aged wood look. I'm not going to mess with that tree up there yet or this branch. I just want to get something here. And we know that in the future we're going to have a ledge here. I'm going straight to the black gesso and just bringing it in there. Same thing over here. You can see how powerful it is. It just cuts right through. So that's going to be our ledge in the forest here. We know our tree. We know our tree up here is going to be coming down with a branch. I'm just going to start bringing that in. I'm not going to go too far because uh, I want my branches to be cool. This is a number 12, by the way, if you're looking for the for the, bristle, for the size of the brush. And I think we're at a point where I need to let this dry a bit. If not, I'll sit here and paint all day. <laughs> all right, 
so I'm liking that step. You always want your darks underneath your lights, so there we go. It's the beginning. Um, Got to figure out how we want our ground to go. But we'll get that going as we figure out the layout just a little bit more. Our tree will have you're looking straight on at it. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and go from there.